now we're going to continue with uh, this series called Marked by Miracles. Marked by Miracles. And uh, last week we looked at uh, Mark chapter 1, and uh, we read verse 1 through verse 15. And uh, now we are going to uh, uh, continue. I'm just going to go right through chapter 1. And we're going to get back. Here's verse 16. Uh, and uh, it reads, here we go. Who's ready? All right. Good. Matt, you ready? Matt's ready. Here we go. Verse 16. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And uh, Jesus' famous words, he, he said, verse 17, come follow me, Jesus said. And I will send you out to fish for people. They were fishing for fish. And now Jesus says, I'm going to not change what you're used to doing. I'm just going to change how you're doing it. You're no longer going to fish for fish, but you're going to fish for people. And uh, he says, verse 18, at once they left their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and their brother John in a boat preparing their nets. And without delay, without delay, sometimes we, we delay, we talk ourselves out of opportunities that we think are an inconvenience. And yet it is an opportunity God has put in front of us. And without delay, we need to step out in faith. And without delay, he called them and they left their father, left their father, Zebedee, poor Z, got left in the boat kids abandoned him and they left Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed Jesus. The, the title of the, the message this morning, I'm going to call it Comfortably Uncomfortable. Comfortably Uncomfortable. Let's pray. Father, I uh, pray that you will just speak through me this morning, Lord God. I uh, pray, Father, that you, you help this message to be articulated in a way that could apply to everyone listening, everyone listening online, everyone listening at the Jersey Shore Arts Center right now, Lord God, I pray, Father, that our hearts will be open and we will receive whatever challenge you want to put in front of us. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. So at home, at my home, I don't know how you set up your home, but one of the featured uh, places in our room is the Lazy Boy. Does anybody enjoy a good Lazy Boy? Raise your hand if you have a lazy boy in your house. If, if you don't, I highly suggest that you get a lazy boy because nothing, I mean, after a long day, after chasing kids, after uh, all the stresses of life, it is so nice to put your feet up in a lazy boy, maybe get like a bag of, uh, I, I should actually preach the entire sermon. I, I feel like just so at ease right now. Like, I could just talk to you for like two hours right now, just so, uh, I'm sure you wouldn't like that. You're in those uncomfortable hard seats right now. Everybody is jealous and hating Pastor Isaac right now. Uh, <laughs> my butt feels so good. Um, and, and so, I mean, this is amazing. And then you, you get a bag of Doritos. No, not in our house, right, honey? What, what do we have, bag of veggie chips? <laughs> and, and, and you could just enjoy life. Lazy boy. Uh, you know, I, we all like to be comforted. We all like to be comfortable. I, I think that a lot of us, unfortunately, we make the goal comfort. And we do everything that we can to make our lives easier and more comfortable. And unfortunately, when we want to serve God, we have to learn to be comfortably uncomfortable. I had to do something so uncomfortable this past week. Uh, I love doing things that I'm good at. Anybody like that? Like you, I, I like, like if I'm good at something, I like to do it. Um, when I'm not good at something, I don't like to do it because I have this thing, I don't like to make a fool of myself. I do that on my own plenty. I don't need to go out of my way to make a fool of myself. Like roller skate, like Diamond the other day, uh, last Sunday, went to a birthday party. No, it wasn't a birthday party. Took the kids to the roller rink. Dad did not go. Because I don't roller skate. I'm not going to make a fool out of myself in front of all these random strangers, the, the middle-aged men in, in red velvet shirts that know how to roller skate backwards. I don't need to make a fool of myself in front of those men. Uh, I'm good. Ice skating, not my thing. This week, we had to uh, uh, go up to Camelback. We went to Camelback. I, I guess I should probably get out of it. I, I, didn't, I didn't. It was just so comfortable. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I may go back to that later. And we, I, I had to do something so uncomfortable this week. I've never skied, snowboarded my entire life. I'm terrible on things on ice. I'm terrible at, at anything that does not include a ball in my hand or, or what, that I'm kicking. And, and so Judah wanted to go snowboarding so bad. And so we got a lesson for him. And uh, we, we got there, and Judah gets his lesson, and, and I, was, I was just going to let him, I was just going to send him up the mountain all by himself and just say, go, you know, go for it, Judah. Uh, but then I got convicted by the Holy Spirit uh, that I needed to uh, get comfortably uncomfortable and do something that I'm terrible at. So I, I decided to go skiing for the first time. No lesson. No lesson. Uh, and, and I see these, these you know, three-year-olds and these, like, 80-year-old people just uh, just just cruising down the mountain. It looks so easy. And so, you know, Judah's got his snowboard. He's doing great. And, and so I want to be a good dad. And uh, we, we go in the bunny hill for a little bit. And, and I start to, I, I, I kind of got it. Any, anyone ever, like, think you have something and you're like, this is, this is easy. And then I'm like, I got, a, I got a good sermon. Me and Judah, it's just me and Judah. And I'm, and I'm like, I got this sermon called I Need a Bigger Hill. And I'm going to preach that one day. Like, I need a bigger hill. Because I'm like, Judah, I, I need a bigger hill. This is not challenging. I need a bigger hill. And so uh, we went up to a bigger hill. The bigger hill was called the Easy Way Down. That was the next step up from the bunny hill. It was a green hill called the Easy Way Down. So me and Judah go up to the Easy Way Down. And, and it, it seems like, like, like it's just, it's just kind of easy. It's, it's kind of winding. And, and you kind of wind your way down the hill. And, and then, unfortunately, Judah got in front of me. And he was supposed to make a left and, and instead of making a left down the easy way down, he took a right down King Tut Hill is what it was called. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, I see Judah. I'm like, no, Judah, because <laughs> I have to follow him <laughs> down this hill. And so, you know, I get going down this hill, and, and it was so easy to stop on the bunny hill. And, and I get going down this hill. Uh, King Tut Hill, and, and you're supposed to, like, turn, and so I'm freaking out. I'm going down this hill, like, a million miles an hour. Judah is, like, right in front of me. Judah falls. Judah falls, and I'm like, oh, no, because I'm, like, going right at him, like, 65 miles an hour. I'm freaking out. Oh, my God, I'm going to kill my son. I got these skis. I got these poles. I'm, I'm going to impale my son. I'm flying down the mountain, so I try and turn, and as I'm turning, I turn too much. I kid you not. I turn around backwards. I'm going backwards now. Down this hill, six, I'm screaming at the top. I felt like George Costanza from a Seinfeld episode. And, and, and thankfully, I had the wherewithal not to keep going, but just to fall backwards and stop my, that was the only way. So this buffoon on King Tut Hill, but I'll tell you what, I had the most amazing time. My hips are so sore right now. I, I, I can't even tell you. You know, these jeans are, are, are a little too tight, believe it or not, for Pastor Isaac. And, and, but it was amazing because I, I got comfortably, uncom I mean, some of the things that we are so uncomfortable doing end up being the most exciting adventures of our lives. And me and Judah will never forget that day I almost impaled him on King Tut Hill at Camelback. And, and the, I, I said all that to say this, if you want to follow Jesus, you have to be very comfortable being uncomfortable. It is very uncomfortable to follow Jesus. When Jesus came to these disciples, he, he said, follow me, leave what you are comfortable with, and follow me and do something that you don't think you're capable of doing on your own. But whenever I call you, I will always call you to forsake your comfort. And, and unfortunately for us, we make comfort our goals. We love heated seats. We love cushioned chairs. We leave churches because they're too uncomfortable. And we think that Jesus is comfortable. And the life that he was called us to is going to be a comfortable ride when in fact it never really is. See, a lot of us end up allowing dysfunction to become comfortable with us. See, we don't understand many times the function of a relationship with Jesus. We, we think a function of a relationship with Jesus is comfort, but it's not. You know, we, we don't know the function of certain relationships. That, that, that's why uh, so often our relationships can be so dysfunctional is because we, we, we think someone is supposed to function a certain way for us, and when in fact they're not. Like our, our, our kids, they use like Dewey as a human shield. You know, when they're fighting, like, you can't, you can't hit me because Dewey's here. Like, that's not what Dewey is for. He's not a human shield. And, and I have found that the, the most 
dysfunctional relationships that I've had in my life have come when I have expected something out of somebody that they were never created to give me. And one of the problems with our relationship with Jesus is we think that he is supposed to function in one way and provide comfort and ease for us when he was never supposed to do that in the first place. This world is so dysfunctional. We, we've made dysfunction normal. Like something popped up on my Facebook news feed this week about, about a movement for men to breastfeed. It's not the function of a man to breastfeed. <laughs> and and we, we're, we're full of, of a world that, that creates all these dysfunctions and trying to make it normal, and, and it's not. And, and, and I believe that God wants to confront our comforts. He wants to, to flip us upside down and understand that we need to get comfortably uncomfortable. And Jesus said the words famously, uh, and there's nothing comfortable about this. If you want to be my disciple, Levi, then you have to forsake your life, pick up my cross, and follow me. That you need to deny yourself. I, I mean, that, that, there's nothing comfortable about that. But this is what, this is what Satan wants us to, to get in a, a chair and get real comfortable, get real comfortable. But God wants us to get out of our comfort. Some of you have been too comfortable for too long. Uh, I, I have this uh, a, a love for eagles. Some of you may know that. I have an eagle ring I love. This is my dad's. And what is so amazing about an eagle is an eagle, when it's just a little baby, is surrounded by comfort surrounded by a, a comfortable nest. The, the mama bird will give food right into the, the eagle's mouth. But when the eagle grows up, the mama bird will do something crazy. Will take the eagle out of its comfortable nest and take it to the edge of the rock and kick the eagle off the cliff. <laughs> and the eagle will fall and fall and fall and then mama bird will go and swoop down and pick up baby eagle, bring it back to the cliff and then kick the little baby eagle off the cliff one more time and it'll do it over and over and over again until the baby eagle learns to do what? Learns to fly. But the baby eagle will never learn to fly when it's still in the nest. The baby eagle has to be challenged. It has to be confronted. It, it has to get out of its comfort zone and to, in order to understand what it was created to do. Too many people sit in churches comfortable Comfortable with compromise, comfortable with mediocrity, comfortable with their, their, their lives just the way that they are. And whenever they're challenged, they, they just throw it to the side and say, no, I'm, I'm good as I am. I need Jesus just as a, a, a grace man. I just need Jesus for my get out of jail free card. And, and, and we turn the grace of God into a, a, a comfortable little couch that we can, can, can mosey in, never having to change. But God wants to challenge our comforts. And so that leads me to the main part of this sermon. Are you with me so far? I'm going somewhere. Because watch this. It says, verse 21. Then they went to Capernaum. This is Jesus. Now he's got his disciples. And when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. And the people there were amazed at his teachings because he taught them with one who had authority. Not like one of those teachers of the law. There was something different about Jesus. They, they noticed it right away. It wasn't in, in, in just what he said, but it was how he said it. The authority in which that, that he was speaking and living out the word. And then it says, verse 23, this is crazy. Listen, it says, just then a man in their synagogue. Whose synagogue? Their synagogue, not Jesus' synagogue. Jesus was a guest preacher. Jesus was preaching at somebody else's church in a synagogue, in their synagogue. So Jesus is a guest speaker. He's in their synagogue. And then all of a sudden in their church, someone who was possessed with an unclean or impure spirit cries out. All right, good. There's nobody in here with an impure spirit. There's nobody. But he cried out. But, but maybe at the end of the service they'll, they will be. Who knows? We'll see. And verse 24 the, the, the Spirit says, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. And, and, and then Jesus said, be quiet, sternly. Come out of him. And the impure spirit shook the man. This is crazy. Have you ever seen anything like this happen? I, I, I saw this happen one time. 
One time when I was 10 years old, I, I saw this take place right in, in the front of the church when my dad was preaching. There was a man that, that walked in the doors, and, and he, was, he was troubled. He was possessed. And then all of a sudden, when he left, he left a whole man. He left a sane man because every single spirit, unclean spirit, has to bow down to the name of Jesus. That when you speak that name over your life, over your family's life, everything that is not contrary to God's word has to go. There is power. We sang it this morning. It was the first song that we sang, that there is power in the name of Jesus, that that beautiful amazing name has to be spoken when devils run out and it says the unpure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek and people were so amazed what what is crazy about this though people were amazed they couldn't believe it this church this temple this synagogue they don't have walk-ins they don't have you know a, a first-time guest like in, in the temple, you, you, you had to go through rigorous membership classes and, and teachings in order to just have a seat at the temple. These were people that were there every single week, every Saturday. They came to temple. Every Saturday, they heard a man preach. And every single Saturday, this dude sat in church with an unclean spirit and heard the word of God. But he was so comfortable with that spirit that he could come to church every single week and sit in church so comfortable with that spirit. And that got me thinking that how many people come to church every single week with that same spirit that they have gotten so comfortable with, so comfortable living with, that they have now not even realized that it's there. It has taken up residence in your life, and you don't even know that it's there anymore because you have gotten so comfortable with your dysfunction. You have gotten so comfortable in your own sin. You have gotten so comfortable with your own compromise that you could come to church and not even allow the conviction of the Holy Spirit to come on you when the Lord speaks to you anymore. How many people live that way every single week. And, and, and BT Dub, don't get like so caught up in the word demon, right? Because we hear that word demon, we're like, that's intense. I, I, is this like a demon church, like snake handling? No, no, not at all. Because I'll, I'll tell you what, in the Bible times, they called everything a demon. You had a runny nose, demon. Mental illness, demon. You know, sickness, demon. You had sin, demon because they, they didn't they didn't know everything was just that that's what they called it so 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 this man had an unclean spirit that he was so comfortable with and and that, that got me thinking how comfortable are we with our sins with our weaknesses with our dysfunction with our insecurities that that we actually enjoy them in our lives because it gives us an excuse why we can't be who God has created us to be and get out of our comfort zone and allow ourselves to be challenged in a way that God wants to challenge us. And we allow our sins and our weaknesses and our insecurities and our background and our lack of education and our lack of support to be our excuse. And we love that as our, as our excuse because it keeps us comfortable. I thought about like COVID. Like people... I don't think people love COVID, but they love the excuse that COVID gives them. <laughs> Gained 15 pounds this week. Why? COVID. You know, package arrives late at your house. You call them up. What's the problem? Uh, you know, COVID. You know, I, I'm, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I never have time. COVID. You know, I, all, all these things. Why? You know, still, still don't have a job. Why? COVID. No, it's just because you're lazy and you're not out, actually out there looking for a job. You're just stuck and you love the excuse. <laughs> Is this too real for you? Because I could get, I could really really get real and, and talk about all of, the, all of the little disabilities that we have that we love to have. We don't even want them to go away. We don't even want prayer for them because we love to have it as an excuse to why we can't function in the right way and why we can't be challenged by a preacher and by other people because I grew up in a dysfunctional home, because I, I, had, uh, I was a product of, uh, of, of abuse when I was a child and now I can't function normal. I want you to know that God can set you free of that if you confront your comfort. Don't get comfortable in your insecurity 
insecurities. Don't get comfortable in your weaknesses, in your sins. Allow God to begin to break you free from them. And now you don't have, see, this is what the grace of God does. The grace of God removes sin as an excuse for why I can't be who God has created me to be. He has removed the sin, the shame of my past, so now I could be free to be comfortably uncomfortable. I thought about the, the man at the pool of Bethesda. Remember him? He, he's surrounded by lame people. He couldn't walk, so he surrounded himself with other people who can't walk. And we love to do that because when we're around people who have the same problems that we have, we think our problem is normal. Like, if, if we're around people who can't walk, we think can't walking is normal because that's all we ever see. And that's what so many people do. You, we, we just surround ourselves with people with the same problems. And, 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 and you know, I, I think it's, it's good to have support groups, but you also need to have some iron sharpening iron groups, some people that aren't in the problem and in the pit that you're in that actually can help you get out of the struggle that you're in. But we don't want that. We love to be around people with the same dysfunctions as us so we feel normal. But, but Jesus asked this guy to do something. He said, do you want to be well? And sometimes I think God's asking you that too. Do you want to be well? Do you want to be set free from your sin? Do you want to be set free from your shame? Do you want to be set free from your past? Do you? Or do you want to keep using it as your excuse for why you can't get to where God has called you to be? And Jesus said to this man, do you want to be well? And what did he say? He said, excuse. Well, I don't have anyone to help me in the pool. I don't have anybody to help me. Well, you know what? I'm here, Jesus says. And I'll help you. You don't need that. I'll help you. And Jesus wants to say that to you, making an excuse for why you can't be who you are called to be. And you don't think you have anybody to help you. Jesus is there. Let him be it to you. Jesus wants to confront your comfort. See, we think, we think comfort comes from Jesus, but sometimes comfort comes from Satan. He wants to get you so comfortable that you don't ever allow yourself to be challenged by a sermon, by another person, because being comfortable is the goal. That's why we eat comfort foods. What's your favorite comfort food? You know, what's your favorite comfort food, Diamond? I'm not even going to repeat that for people watching online because it's disgusting. But, come, you know, you have your comfort foods and, and you eat them because you like the way it makes you feel. gives you a sugar high. But it never changes the problem that you have. It just gives you, you know, and, that, and then we have comfort friends. Comfort friends that, that we get around. When, when, and this is, you know, if you ever want to feel better about yourself for a short period of time, you, want, you know what you should do? It's great. Works every time. Talk about other people. That, that, so, sometimes people, that, that, that's their cure for their problems is I'm just going to talk about other people. And, and you're so stuck with your comfort friends and that's your source. But you're getting your comfort from the wrong place. See, when you get your comfort from anyone or anything other than the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, then you are going to live continually in dysfunction the rest of your life. I, I remember uh, when I uh, got diagnosed with uh, this, this thing. Anyone ever heard of spondylolithesis? So um, I was born with this thing called spondylolithesis, and it's something in your lower back that uh, you're, you're born with. It's a stress fracture that you're born with. And I remember when I was, you know, after playing baseball, I was married, had two kids, and, and I was so out of shape, and everything I did hurt my back. And I would always want to uh, sit in my lazy boy because it was comfortable was so comfortable. Every single time I would hurt my back and then I would go out to try and, you know, play football. I would like pull a hamstring. It was terrible. And I'd come home, I'd sit in my lazy boy. Remember this, babe? Just in my lazy boy constantly eating ice cream, just jars of ice cream, comfort foods, comfortable setting. And I had no idea that sitting in the lazy boy is the worst thing that you could do for a bad back. It actually makes it worse. You think it's helping, but it, it is actually impairing you. 
And I would always, and this would be my excuse. This would be my excuse why I could, I would never, this is funny, I would never, I was one of those persons, I would never want to do legs. I hated doing legs. My excuse was I, I have a bad back. I got spondylolithesis. When you say spondylolithesis, like, like people are just like, yeah, he's real hurt. Don't mess with that. You know? <laughs> and, but, but then I didn't realize that my excuse to not wanting to be uncomfortable was actually keeping me disabled, actually keeping me hurt and injured. But when I actually decided to get uncomfortable and do things that may be a little uncomfortable for a season, for a while, and, and now you ask Diamond how many times I ever complained about my back, the answer is never because I allowed myself to get uncomfortable and get up out of the lazy boy. And the same is true for you. See, what happens is when we get tired and weary and sore, we go back to what is comfortable. In the same way that Peter went back to fishing when, when he got disappointed, he went back to his old life. That's why when you get uh, uh, tired and weary, you go back to your old sins, your old thinking, the old way that you talk, the old way you used to comfort yourself. But you need to come up with a new way, the right way, which is to come into the house of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, to cast all your anxieties on him. The Bible says to present your requests to the Lord with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. And then the peace of the Lord will be bestowed upon you. See, that's the new way that God wants to bring us into. And see, now we don't have a temple. The Bible says our bodies are a temple. So what unclean spirits have you allowed in your temple to take residence and to get comfortable inside your own spirit, inside your own heart? What sins, what compromises have gotten comfortable within you? Jesus comes to confront, not to condemn, but to confront. And this man had an evil spirit that got comfortable in his temple. The Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 2, it, it says to prune every branch that does not bear fruit. Every one of us should take an inventory of the branches in our life, of the relationships in our life, the, 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 the mindsets in our life, and realize whether or not it is bearing fruit, whether we are in a season now where we can't afford to, to, to not have fruit-bearing branches in our life. You're getting too old for this. You're getting too mature for this to allow yourself to get so caught up in frivolous things, frivolous people that keep pulling you back into who you used to be. It's time to prune that branch and come out, for pride to come out, fear to come out. Revelation chapter, chapter 3 says this. It says, uh, verse 15, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold or hot, and I wish you were neither one of those. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. That's what God says about being lukewarm. Lukewarm. Nothing's worse than, than, than something lukewarm. Give me a hot coffee. Give me an iced coffee. Don't you dare. I will throw it back at that drive through window if you give me a lukewarm coffee. Don't mess with me. But I want it hot or cold. And that's what Jesus is saying is, is that it, either, either follow me or don't follow me. You either got to be all in or all out. Pick one, but with one foot in and one foot out, I don't even want you on my team. Because all you are going to be is a liability. I neither, you're either with me or you're against me. And you need to pick a side. You need to pick a team that you're going to play for. Stop going back and forth. Stop saying I serve God on Sundays, but, but Monday and, and maybe on Tuesday I'll go to a Bible study. But, but on Wednesday I'm going to do my... No, who are you living for? It's not a part-time job. It's a full-time life that God is calling you to live. And, and then it says, uh, uh, verse, verse 21... Uh, it says, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Lord is saying. And here I am, and I stand at the door and knock. Anyone who hears, I will come in, and I will eat with that person. And I kind of close with this. Kind of, I'm getting close. You remember the three little bears and Goldilocks? You remember the three little bears? I'm going to tell you that the real version of the three little bears in Goldilocks. So what happened was, was the three little bears, they went to go get lunch, 
And Goldilocks was very tired, kind of like, like Abby. Goldilocks is like you know, Abby going in there, three little bears. And, 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 and the three little bears, they left out their porridge, and, 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 and Abby was, was, was hungry. And so she decided to go get some. I'm just going to go with Abby now. Sorry, Abby. Uh, you're just right there in the middle. And so Abby comes in and, and sips the, 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 the one porridge. Oh, that's too hot. Uh, then goes to, to, to baby bear. Oh, that's too cold. And then goes to mama's bear and then says what, Abby? Just right. And then, and then got so full. Oh, I'm getting tired, Abby said. I'm getting so tired. So Abby goes into the bedroom of the three little bears and goes in to pop the bears. Oh, that's too hard. Then goes into baby bear's bed. Oh, that's too soft. And then, then Abby goes into the one in the middle. Says, ah, that bed is just right. Just right. So comfortable. And then Abby gets so comfortable. See, this is where the enemy wants us. So comfortable that we never change. So comfortable that we come to church every week. Say, preach your heart out, pastor. Hear God's word. But I'm not changing a darn thing. It's like going to the dentist. You, you assimilate going to the dentist to come into church. You know, going to the dentist, and then the dentist says, you need to floss every day. And you're basically saying, I don't care what you tell me, Mr. Dentist. I don't care. You could show me pictures of all the gingivitis that you want. I am not flossing every day. And I feel the same way with so many people coming into church. I don't care what the preacher says. I don't care what God's word says. I want his grace and that's it, because I'm so comfortable in my sin. I'm so comfortable in my dysfunction. And this is right where the enemy wants you. And then this is what happened. What happened to, 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 to little Abby? Little Abby got so comfortable, she fell asleep. Now, the Disney version says the three little bears came and saw Goldilocks Abby there. And they said, oh, look at her. Let's, let's feed her some more food. And, and we got a new best friend. You know, that's the, you want to know the real version? They came in and ate Abby for their dinner. That's the real version. And the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, that we have an enemy that is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he is just waiting for you to get so comfortable, so comfortable in your life, so comfortable living the way you want to live, never challenging yourself, never allowing yourself to be challenged by the Lord to step out of your comfort, and you will end up getting devoured. And the enemy is after you, too comfortable. When you love comfort more than Christ, you will not be lifted up. You will be brought down. Don't let this sermon just, just go to the side. You know the things in your life that you have gotten too comfortable with. Some of you, you have gotten too comfortable reliving an event that took place in 2011. Rehearsing it, talking about it. Come out. Come out. That's not where you are anymore. Come out. You have gotten too comfortable talking about other people in a critical way because somehow it makes you feel better about yourself, come out. Some of you have gotten lukewarm in your love for Christ, in your passion for the Lord, in your worship. You have gotten to a place where you used to be so passionate about worshiping God, so passionate about being in the presence of God, but now you have allowed comfort to be your God, comfort to be your idol, come out in Jesus' name. Some of you have allowed your fear of this pandemic to dominate your life, bring anxiety on you and your family, and has paralyzed you in fear, come out in Jesus' name. God is saying you need to get comfortably uncomfortable. Some of you have allowed yourself to be so comfortable in your private faith and your private worship with God, and you don't ever want to share your testimony with anybody. God used what the enemy meant for evil, for his good, but if you never share it with anybody, it's going to end up getting on a couch and devoured by the enemy. Use your testimony. Come out of that passive Christianity. Some of you have gotten so compromised in your walk with the Lord. 
Lord, allowing uh, just a, excessive drinking and excessive drug use and, and things that have gotten so out of control in your life. At one time, you thought you had it under control, but now it is beginning to affect your life in ways you never thought possible. Come out in Jesus' name. That little compromise that you have allowed to take root in your life is now growing, and you don't even realize it because you've fallen asleep. Come out in Jesus' name. That spirit that always wants to quit and give up when things get hard, come out in Jesus' name. The challenge is there for you to grow, not for you to walk away. Who am I preaching to this morning that has gotten lukewarm with their love for Christ, that has allowed COVID to allow your past, to allow some trauma that happened in your life to be the excuse that you use whenever God wants to challenge you? Come out. In Jesus' name. If you're able to, just, just stand to your feet right now. Amen. Who is this sermon for? Amen. If this sermon was for you, I just want you to just, just lift your hand right now. Amen. Yes, Father. Father, our bodies are your temple. Father, I pray right now for conviction to fall on us. Conviction to fall on our hearts. Not condemnation, but conviction. Conviction to do what? Conviction to repent. When Jesus called the disciples, it says that they forsook all and followed him. I pray, Father, that, that we're going to begin to drop stuff in our life right now. That this desire for comfort will not drive us any longer. That this year we are going to get out of our comfort zone. We're going to get out of our lazy boy. And we are going to allow you to use us in whatever way you want to use us. Whether that is on, on, on the streets witnessing with the Jersey Shore Dream Center or maybe in an office setting where, where, where we have been so quiet to share our faith. But God, I pray that you will give us an unction to be able to share the goodness of God. That your goodness has caught me and has chased after me. And it is chased after me so that I can now share it with others, Lord. I pray, Father, that you will release us in that calling. Some of us, we have, uh, have run in fear of what is going on around us. In, in the economy and in the political system and in the culture and we are seeing uh, so many things uh, the spirit of perversion that has taken over and we have allowed the fear to come in our heart but that is not the fear of God it is the fear of the world somehow getting inside of us but we need to now say how can I get what God has put in me in the world that is what the kingdom of God is it is not being afraid of the world getting in the church but it is allowing the church to get in the world Lord God I'm not afraid of what is happening around me because greater is he who is within me than he that is in the world. God, use us to be a light in the midst of darkness, to not allow our comfort to, to put our light out. God, forgive us all for allowing this lukewarmness to set in, Lord God, for the disappointments of our yesterdays to get us comfortable and to tame our dreams. God, set us free. Every impure spirit come out in Jesus' name. And at that name, it has to go. In Jesus, every addiction has to go in Jesus' name. Name, spirit of deception, spirit of envy, spirit of bitterness, critical thinking, spirit of gossip, be gone in Jesus' name. Come out of our hearts in Jesus' name. Mental illness, be gone in Jesus' name. I am whole in the name of Jesus. Every infirmity, be gone in Jesus' name. Heal our bodies 
Every spirit of division in a marriage be gone in Jesus' name. Spirit of bitterness that has been harbored for years against a family member, be gone in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Father, now that it is gone, I am free. You are where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now you can be free to get out of your lazy boy. And be who God has created you to be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. If you would this morning, I I feel good. I hope hope you feel as good as I feel because I feel free. I feel uncluttered. I feel like I'm ready to go. Whatever this week comes before me, I'm free. I'm not going to fall back into an old mindset. I'm free, baby. And you are, too. Let's go out there and be comfortably. Let's be comfortably. That's right. God bless you all. Love you all. Uh, You have an usher that's going to help you leave. If you need prayer for anything, uh, please come forward. Our, uh, Our leaders will be here to pray for you. God bless you. Love you. Have an awesome, awesome Sunday.